Hi, welcome to CTN Member Highlight. I'm Leslie McVeigh, and today my guests are Bob and Sally Shadbull with Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights. Thank you for coming again. I know we had a, an in-depth uh, interview mm -hmm. recently, but this is something that's ongoing mm -hmm. and will be for a while. So I thank you for coming back to talk more about what is happening in Gaza and um, with the Palestinian Israeli conflict. Thank, Thank you, you for yes. having us back. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, where shall we start? Um, mm -hmm. Bob, you, you have some things you want to say about maybe update of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll start with some statistics that I have here okay. um, that, um, that are alarming. And they're not even accurate. They're, they're, the numbers are going up all the time. 900, as of July 26th, which was just a few days ago, mm -hmm. Um, 999 Palestinians have been killed in this 20-odd day conflict, including at least 760 civilians, of whom 226 are children and 117 are women. 6,233 Palestinians have been injured, including 1,949 children and 1,160 women. 46 Israelis have been killed, including two civilians and 43 soldiers, in addition to one foreign national. 22 hospitals, clinics, and medical centers have been hit and damaged by the shelling. 215,000 displaced people hosted in UNRWA government schools in informal shelters or with host families. These are the United Nations statistics mm -hmm. that are put out daily. You can go to the website and find these, and the numbers, as they say here, are going up. Yes. Since the, the very short ceasefire the other day, they have recovered more bodies, and they have not been identified until they are. Those numbers don't get yes. higher. Actually, I did go on uh, to get the updated figures, mm -hmm. and um, there are now 1,088 Palestinians killed. And it's estimated that 90% of the uh, deaths are civilian deaths. Mm -hmm. And um, Israeli deaths are 53 and fewer than 10% are civilian deaths. Right. Which does not mean that any is no. okay. No. But to give a sense of the, right. of the proportion of power and the effects of the power being used against right. um, the Gazans. Right. Well, it is, it is extremely complicated. And I think the world watching, there's a movement now, you know, just, just stop, have, have another ceasefire. I know Hamas has agreed to a ceasefire, and reportedly the Israelis have not. They've, they've, they've said no. Mm -hmm. So do you know any updates mm -hmm. on that and what's happening as far as mm -hmm. stopping this? I know that it, was just, it just lasted for 12 hours the other day, and they were able to get some v very much needed supplies into to the hospitals and the, and the schools and, and the people. You know, it's, um, the whole ceasefire story is interesting right now because what the Israeli pro-Israel press, and not all of the Israel press is pro-Netanyahu, but they have been claiming all along that it's Israel that wants the ceasefire. It's Hamas who doesn't. They say it was Hamas and Islamic Jihad who rejected the first offer of a ceasefire, which was put out by Israel and Egypt. Um, I can't remember if we talked about this in the last interview or not, but maybe it bears repeating. That ceasefire had been made up by Egypt, whose leaders hate Hamas, and by Israel, and it was done with no consultation with Hamas. Hamas found out about it through the, um, through the uh, what do you call it, social, social media. Social media. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, Hamas has offered its own ceasefire proposals, and we hear so little about them, if any. Well, it was actually a big headline in the paper yesterday mm -hmm. about that. Um, saying that Hamas has asked for another ceasefire mm -hmm. and that Israel has said no. Was that the, I'm not sure, Hamas, one thing, they were asking for a ceasefire short one 
to um, be able to handle some of the wounded. Mm -hmm. But then there's a longer proposed one that has 10 points to it. Is mm -hmm. that the one that was reported? I'm, I may, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, I think it's interesting just to know what some of those mm -hmm. points were mm -hmm. because they are eminently mm -hmm. reasonable mm -hmm. and fair. And they're offering Israel, if it will have a ceasefire on the basis of these conditions, they're offering as well a 10-year truce, a 10-year ceasefire. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can talk about this a little more later, but the record actually shows that Hamas has been far better at abiding by ceasefires than has Israel. Mm -hmm. But a couple of them, let me just mention them. Hamas says, we would like an international seaport and airport under UN supervision. Now, what's wrong? Every, they want a seaport. Right. You know, they've asked for mm -hmm. an international border presence around their borders. If they're the ones wanting to start the violence, they wouldn't be asking for international troops and monitors around there. They are asking for um, a revitalization of the Gaza industrial zone. They're asking that their fishermen be able to go out 10 kilometers to fish. Now, all of these are eminently reasonable mm -hmm. requests. It's saying, we want to get on with our lives. We want to develop our economy. And everything that's asked for, the other six, they're all really essentially asking Israel to abide by international law. And we're not hearing about these 10 proposals. We're mm -hmm. not hearing about how reasonable Hamas and Islamic Jihad are being. What a reasonable diplomatic mm -hmm. gesture this is. That's part of our problem. It's part of Sally's and my concern. We think if the American people are properly informed by the media, that they will begin to see that, my, there's another whole story here that which we need to be hearing about. Mm -hmm. What happens, I think, um, much of the time is you start to have a conversation with someone and then they go immediately to Hamas. Why doesn't Hamas stop? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I understand that question mm -hmm. and such. And yet, I think understanding the context, the history of what the Gazan people have, the Palestinian people have been dealing with, helps to shed light on that. Um, I recently wrote a little thing in my Facebook that I'd like to share with you because this kind okay. of gives a, a sense of, I think, where the Palestinian people are coming from as related okay. to uh, y y the the resistance mm -hmm. that that is being um, the res resistance that Hamas is is providing. Mm -hmm. Is this the one? About yeah. Can yeah. I just preface yeah, it a sure. little bit? Mm -hmm. um, people will say, and I hear them say it. Why won't Hamas just stop firing the rockets? Why won't they accept a ceasefire under almost any conditions? All right? And I think what Sally, if it's what I'm thinking mm -hmm. of that yeah. she wrote on her Facebook page, it gets at why they won't mm -hmm. do yeah. that. And it's in response to a Huffington Post um, essay called From Gaza, I would rather die in dignity than agree to living in an open air prison. So this is what I wrote. Palestinians are tired of being bullied and humiliated. They are tired of having hope for a better future for their children, only to have their children killed in yet one more operation, whatever it is. Their lives snuffed out between an inhale and exhale of one breath and the next. They are tired of waiting for the world to wake up and for someone with the power to say no you will not be a bully anymore. They are tired of being blamed for the deaths of their own people and tired of being accused of being terrorists when they act in resistance to an occupying force, force that has the fourth strongest military in the world. They are tired of waiting to die a slow death. Well, I, and I think it, even that, reinforces that there are so many different factions here that we we do as I think Americans get confused by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have Fatah, we have Hamas, 
And then the Palestinian people I think of as being separate from either of those factions. I think that's true. And the Hamas is, in their doctrine, wanting to destroy the state of Israel. That's part of it. On the other hand, they have brought social services to the Gaza Strip that were never there, were there, not there before, were not available. Health care, schools, orphanages, food. Um, so you're getting this mixed message across mm -hmm. the board. And the victims are the people of Palestine, mm -hmm. the everyday people who are losing their lives, hoping that Hamas and Fatah, whoever they're supporting, is helping them make some inroads into having a normal life because they have been yeah. denied yeah. Mm -hmm. by the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have been really imprisoned, as you say, yeah. in this open air prison. You yeah. know, uh, a, an, an, an analogy that I like to use, actually I've, I'm a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. I've been in the mental health field for about 30, over th mm -hmm. you know, about 30 years. And I've worked extensively with the victims of domestic violence and child abuse, that sort of thing. And one of the things that we have come to in the psychology field, we, we talk about are the IPs, the identified patient or identified problem. Mm -hmm. And that is in a family system where there is violence and abuse, trauma, that um, different people, as you say, play different roles in that family system. Right. Um, you've got the parents, you've got the children. You oftentimes have a child, it's not uncommon to see a child who's the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. A child who is the one that's gonna hide and try very hard not to be seen. And then the one that oftentimes ends up in jails or ends up in trouble in school, um, the IP, the identified problem. Mm -hmm. And that's the one who is acting out in response to what is happening at home. Right. What we've come to see and, and is that you can treat the identified problem, but the problem doesn't go away mm -hmm. because there's ongoing violence and abuse. So what we need to do in those situations is, is go to the root of the problem as best as we can. Mm -hmm. And often it's in the context of you know, the, the parents' own histories, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of environment they were raised in, et cetera. But I think it's important to think about that oh. in the context of this, this, this mm -hmm. uh, um, conflict. So yes, we can continue to go to, you know, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. But what is the problem? Who's got the power? Mm -hmm. Who has the power to determine the health and well-being of the family? Well, it's oftentimes the parents that can make a difference. And oftentimes it's the wife is, or the, the weaker of the duo in the family system is also terrified and silent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to tend to what needs to be tended to. Mm -hmm. And when we go back to the Israeli-Palestinian situation, and again, we look at the numbers, we don't have to say who's right and who's wrong, but mm -hmm. what do the numbers tell us? Mm -hmm. The numbers give us without any contest, I think, where the power mm -hmm. is. And that is where we need to be, we need to be focusing on that. Mm -hmm. And why, why is there acting out? Right. If that's what the world is, is, is right. saying. And, and, and with all of this, we lose sight. We focus on these power sources, whatever degree of power they have, and lose sight of, of the faces of right. these. These are not numbers, they're right. people. Mm -hmm. And everyone has a name. Yes. Yeah. And everyone has an age mm -hmm. from yeah. little babies mm -hmm. to old people are being killed. Yes. And being just thrown out there, if not killed, displaced. And one of the things you talk about being a psychologist, they're in great need of people to help them, these families and these children, oh, yeah. process what's happening outside their door, yeah. around them, in their lives every day. Yes. They haven't had a normal day for a long time. Mm -hmm. Jesse, could I, uh, I want to come back to the Hamas charter because mm -hmm. over and over that's brought up. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people who think if you say the word Hamas, if you say the word Hamas charter, mm -hmm. if you say rockets flying out, they think those words now end the discussion because everybody understands the truth. Well, they don't end the discussion. Mm -hmm. There's another document that needs to be part of that uh, conversation. 
And it is a uh, doctrine, I mean a document put out by the Jewish National Fund in the year 1888. Now this goes back a while. And I want to quote here. It says its stated aim is, quote, to redeem the land of Palestine as the inalienable possession of the Jewish people. Now this was 1888 mm -hmm. that this was said. Everything that the Zionists, as they called themselves, have done since 1888, right on up through all of the liberal labor governments and the Likud governments, right on up to Netanyahu, have all acted on the basis of that charter and that statement. And I'm referring now to, of course, Mr. Netanyahu's constant assertion, we have the right to expand our settlements. Mm -hmm. Also, the Israeli government is composed of a number of parties that they, they have coalition governments. Not a single party in their government recognizes the right of the Palestinians to even have a state. Mm -hmm. And unlike Hamas, Israel has the power to carry out that aim, which is to deny them a state. Mm -hmm. There are a couple or three parties in the, Pal in the Israeli government which actually state in their charters that there will be no Palestinian state. People need to know these things mm -hmm. because they keep just focusing on that Hamas says we want to destroy, all right? Mm -hmm. Israel is destroying. Mm -hmm. The Palestinians hope for a right. state. So we also have to, when somebody makes a charge or a claim an acu or a, a threat, one intelligent thing to do is to assess how capable are they of carrying it out. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in his right mind on the planet who thinks that Hamas has any chance whatsoever of destroying Israel. If one did have that thought, I would invite them to just look at the numbers which you cited and which exactly. Sally cited. That's happening today. Where is this mm -hmm. firepower that Hamas has? So, yes, Hamas states that in its charter. Oftentimes, charters are just rhetorical statements, not policies for action. And Hamas has said repeatedly that if a, an agreement is made and if the Palestinian people, not Fatah, not the PA, but the Palestinian people in a free, well-monitored plebiscite mm -hmm. agree to that peace agreement, Hamas will accept it. Mm -hmm. Hamas will accept it. Hamas is called a terrorist group. Mm -hmm. Terrorism is generally decided decided as action, or a terrorist group is a group that determines that it will try to harm civilians. On that basis, Hamas does qualify as a terrorist group. Not that they aim specifically for civilians, but they do aim their rockets towards cities. However, again, look at the figures. Mm -hmm. So far, they've killed two civilians. Israel has killed what about 800? 90 percent. 90 percent. Right. So, and theirs have been labeled targeted attacks. That's right. Yeah. That is what we call state terrorism. Mm -hmm. If Israel, Israel has killed, what were the figures, Sally? I think five times as many women and children. Mm -hmm. Five times. I think around 550. Five times as many women and children as Hamas has killed Israeli soldiers. Mm -hmm. So who is carrying out the terrorism here? Now, I want to quote you something, if you'll allow me, uh -huh. and then I'll tell you who said it. Okay. Okay? This is going to be a shocker, I think, for okay. people. <laughs> quote, neither Jewish ethics nor Jewish tradition can disqualify terrorism as a means of combat. We are very far from having any moral qualms as far as our national war goes. We have before us the command of the Torah, whose morality surpasses that of any other body in, of law in the world. The Torah says, quote, ye shall blot them out to the last man, end quote, from the Torah. But first and foremost, terrorism is for us a part of the political battle being conducted under the present circumstances, and it has a great part to play, quote, I mean, following a great part to play, which is speaking in a clear voice to the world, it proclaims our war against the occupier. Now that statement was made by a former prime minister 
of the State of Israel mm -hmm. named Yitzhak Shamir. It was made in 1943 when he was with what was called the Stern Gang. Mm -hmm. And the Stern Gang and Ergun, another group, was headed by uh, Menachem Begin, who later became another prime minister. Mm -hmm. Both of those men and their organizations were recognized by the British, by the Americans, by many prominent Americans like Albert Einstein, mm -hmm. Hannah Arendt, and others, as terrorists. He made that statement in 1943. Mm -hmm. So for Israel to act as if it has the high moral ground here is, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it, it's just unfounded. Mm -hmm. They do not have the, nice mor the high moral ground. Right. You, talk, you, you mentioned earlier about Hamas and, and about the Palestinian people, but you did brush over Fatah, so mm. let's talk about them for okay. a little bit, that group that did have an arrangement of some kind of a treaty. Um, they were corrupt while well, holding government office in Palestine, um, and which is why Hamas took so many seats during the what outside observers said was a good mm -hmm. election. Mm -hmm. It was right. not a corrupt election. Right. Right. So Hamas gained some favor because people were tired, I guess, mm -hmm. of the corruption from Fatah. Mm -hmm. right. um, but they are a voice there. They mm -hmm. are the, the president is from that organization, mm -hmm. President of Palestine. Mm -hmm. But they've been kind of a quiet voice during this mm -hmm. conflict. Do you want to address that a bit? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, Fatah and um, the head of the Palestinian Authority, who is Mahmoud Abbas, have of course had a long history of conflict with um, Hamas. Mm -hmm. And our government and Israel's government has done all it could to foster, to nurture, to encourage that conflict between the two of them. Because, I believe, and others are saying, Israel is able, as long as those two sides are divided, Israel can say, as they have said, what's the point in even making a peace treaty with Mr. Abbas? He's got a unified, a disunified people there. So what would, what would be controlling Hamas? There are a number of people now who are saying that the reason that Mr. Netanyahu lied, and I am deliberately using that word because it can be nothing else, he lied to the, American, to the Israeli public, to the world, when he said, we know Hamas was behind this, because Hamas was not. I'm talking about the three teenagers. Um, but many believe, and I do, that he made that claim because his nightmare is that Hamas and Fatah would form a united government mm -hmm. and then have a united front with which to face Israel's occupation. He wants to do all he can to break that apart. And Mr. Abbas has been, um, in my reading of it, lukewarm in supporting um, Hamas in this battle. He's been very quiet. Mm -hmm. He's been very quiet. Across the he, board. he, in part, has felt the need to be because he gets so much pressure from our government who, who tell him, if you don't do what we want you to do, we will cut off all aid to you. Um, I, to what extent he's quiet, and I just don't know the answer to this, whether or not he sort of hopes that Hamas will be defeated. Um, but I don't think he's that stupid. I don't think he's that stupid a man because for Hamas to be defeated does not mean that the people in Gaza are going to suddenly really want to follow Fatah. Let's bring this back right here to Portland, Maine mm -hmm. last Friday in Monument Square. Mm -hmm. You, um, I believe, the Maine citizens for... Maine Voices. Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights. Um, organized mm -hmm. the right. event in Monument Square. Do you want to talk a little bit about what the purpose was and what the response was from the people who came and listened mm -hmm. to what was said that day? Well, let me quickly mention that we also had some co-sponsors of that event who were mm -hmm. supporting us, and that was Peace Action Maine, mm -hmm. Code Pink Maine, and Pax Christi Maine. Okay. Um, 
our aim was to rally people here to show our friends, and we don't mean that just generic friends mm -hmm. only, we do regard those people as our friends, but we have personal friends back in uh, both Gaza and, uh, and, and the West Bank. Wanted to show them that there are people, mm -hmm. even in the little state of Maine, who are listening to their cries and are supporting them. We also wanted to educate the public. So we had tables filled with very good information that you're not likely to find in the regular press. And we were, had people passing those out to pedestrian traffic moving all around that area. We wanted to do that. We also wanted to generate more energy for the calls, and we have done so. Um, Sally tells me she's sort of our social media uh, expert and the monitoring, and she tells me that we've received more hits on our website, mm -hmm. right, and more likes on MVPR's Facebook page in the last two weeks than we had received in the entire preceding year taken all together. One other thing, too, is that it is this, this issue, this tragic mm -hmm. issue, is uh, rallying people that have not been, we've not seen before. Yes. Right? So it is a very diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. We have young people, we have people of different ethnic backgrounds and uh, people representing the immigrant population. We have you know, people of all faith traditions, Muslims, Christians, mm -hmm. I'm Buddhist. Um, and Jews. And Jews. Uh, we have pe Seeds of Peace was mm -hmm. present last, last week. Mm -hmm. And both, again, Christians, Muslims and Jews. Mm -hmm. So this is not, again, an issue of religion. It is an issue related to human rights. Hum humanity. And, yeah. 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 and yeah. we've had such an outpouring. I've, I've, yeah. been, mm -hmm. I've been busy just about, what is it, 18 hours a day now, mm -hmm. trying to respond yeah. to emails. We're getting so much. But let me mention, I'm afraid we're going to we're close to running out of time, but we, I want to mention what's on that side. Okay. What are we going to do moving forward? Right. We are not letting up, not at all. Mm -hmm. We have a series of plans coming up. We're bringing speakers in. We're going to do marches. We're going to do more rallies. We are going to put heat, we think, on our two senators who have voted for every appropriations bill to fund Israel with military hardware to do the killing that we see going on. If we take the amount of money which Israel is getting from us, main, just main taxes, over the 10-year span, 2009 to 2018, is $73,750,000. That money would buy primary health care for each year of those 10 for 59,000 Mainers. Mm -hmm. So why do they keep getting away with those votes? It's because they are believing false things. So we're starting an outrageous truth campaign. Mm -hmm. What is an outrageous truth? An outrageous truth is actually a quite simple, plain, fact-based truth, mm -hmm. which stuns people, stuns them into outrage when they have been fed for all of their lives a steady line mm -hmm. of lies, outrageous lies. So yeah. we're gonna be presenting the outrageous truth. All right, so they can go to this uh, web page yes. and learn more about what it is. Right, mm -hmm. right. And in the meantime, all we can hope is that this ends. It, it, the people of Palestine and of Israel, you know, right. deserve better than their governments and then the, these people who really are fighting yes. instead of talking yeah. and living together. And this Friday, at the Friday first art, first mm -hmm. Friday art walk, we will be out definitely down at the Congress Square. And Great. we're going to have a table. We're going to have material. We're going to be trying Great. to pass things out. Anybody who wants to join us, go to that website. Well, I thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for presenting a side that people maybe are not getting on a regular yeah. basis. And we'll talk again. I hope thank so. Thank you, Leslie. Thank, thank you, you. Leslie. Bye-bye. <laughs>